Hi, good afternoon all, welcome to the video. So today we're going to be covering an introduction into the F56. Why I went for one over buying any other Mini, whether a, a Countryman, a Coupe, second gen, first gen, etc. So why I went for one of those. And in addressing that, I'll be covering off what happened to the Blue Mustang and also the Red Clubman that were on the channel. So I know I've had a few people asking me. So I thought I'll address in this video, let you know exactly what went on with those two cars and why I've now got the F56 as well as the R53 and the Subaru BRZ. So, in terms of the blue Mustang, so it's a Mustang GT, brand new, um, ordered it just after my wife um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. So for me, that purchase of that car was a real distraction. So for me, I, I have a love of cars and to be able to buy a Mustang, I was in a financial position where I was able to go out, order a brand new one and drive that around while we were having to deal with Emma's diagnosis and her treatment so it was a great distraction um, to have so when Emma was recovering um, I could come out and sort of go for a drive in the car and just forget about everything for five minutes and just enjoy the the V8 muscle car that it was and wow what an amazing car that was however because I was looking after Emma I was working from home a lot and the car just wasn't used in one year it did 800 miles and that was just a waste of money to have such a car such as the Mustang sitting on the driveway. So I made the sensible decision to get rid of that car and use the money elsewhere. So I already had two other cars at the time. So I had the Red Clubman that I brought as a project car, the R53, obviously the Range Rover as the family car. I just didn't need that. So the Red Clubman was a really cheap project car again brought after Emma's diagnosis and it was a distraction. So while she was in hospital or recovering, in bed, resting, I was able to come outside and just tinker on that red car, do all the modifications I did. So it was a really rough car when I brought it, super cheap, cheapest club, clubman in the country. Um, and did a lot of changes, cosmetic, had the whole car stripped back and repainted in chili red. JCW kit, wheels, suspension, intake, half cage on the interior, bucket seats, harnesses, etc. The problem with that red car was not the car itself, it was the fact it was brought as a distraction, a cheap project. When it came to the end of Emma's treatment, she was starting to recover. I didn't need that distraction anymore and it wasn't a car I had a connection with or felt anything for. Um, so for me it was an easy decision to let it go to a new owner. And that new owner could get the use out of it, put the engine in that it needed. And because the, I think the engine had done 120,000 miles or so, it needed a refresh for sure. So for me now, I don't dwell on decisions. So if I decide I'm not happy, not feeling something, it's gone and it's out of my life because life is so short and precious that I don't have the time to spend. So when I made that decision to get rid of the Clubman, put it up for sale and within a couple of hours, the current owner actually messaged me, said he was interested, came across, paid for the car and we actually took it home that evening for him so they were able to take delivery of that car and it was gone and out of my way and that gave me uh, the funds then to go and buy another car so considering lots of different things ended up deciding that I wanted another mini F56 and within 24 hours I actually found this F56 so Mills's Autos helped me find it so it's actually a customer of his had this this one for sale hadn't advertised it properly yet um, and I got in there, literally went and saw it straight away, put my deposit down and paid for it. It was such a great spec uh, for the, the money. So at the time I was looking at Challenge 210s, JCWs, all coming out sort of 17, 18,000. Um, this car actually paid a hell of a lot less than that. And a big reason why this car came out cheaper than all the others that I was looking at, not down to its age or anything like that, I mean it's a 2016 place, so it's not an old car. It was the fact that it was Cat S. So what does Cat S mean? Well it's structural damage, so the car had a front corner impact, all suspension, everything absolutely fine, however this bottom corner here, there was a big dent in the in the frame rail, so um, the insurance company wrote it off as a Cat S. So the owner at the time brought the car back and actually took it to a, a BMW approved repairer and actually had that front corner repaired, so it's actually on the passenger side, not the driver's side had that repaired, super easy, bit off the shelf, bit of metal, and the car was back on the road. It needed, I think, a wing and a, a bonnet as well, and a headlight. So all those parts were replaced with new parts. The front end was resprayed, and the car was ready to go. Mills's Autos, before I purchased the car, also inspected the car, made sure it was safe for me, and he wouldn't recommend the car to me. He's a close friend. 
Okay, so the car itself looked very different when I purchased it. So the previous owner, while they were having all the repair work done, decided to paint a lot of the car. So these arches were all colour coded, all along the side skirts were all colour coded. This front lip cost the car was. So there was a red grill surround, so that wasn't very pretty either. It looked like the car had lipstick on. So yeah, there was lots of work to be done to get it to the state that it, it's in today. So we'll cover those mods now, walk you around the car and show you some of the changes we've made. Okay, so let's start off with the engine bay. So up top, to make sure we've got a feed of air into the engine, we've got the Venturi intake. So purchased through Orange Performance. It's the full carbon version. So you can also get a black plastic variation, which does the exact same job, but comes in a little cheaper. So you've got a couple of options. So this is quite an expensive one, but it was one I always wanted when I had my previous F56. So I wanted to go for that full carbon option. So it feeds from not only the bonnet scoop, and we'll show you the bonnet scoop in a minute, and turns that into a functional bonnet scoop and gives you a cold air feed. It also takes air from behind the grills as well, feeds that all into the engine so get that cool air in and get a bigger bang. Down behind the lower grill here we've got uh, an uprated intercooler so we've actually got the larger AirTech uh, intercooler and that's a specific one for the JCW. It's a little bit smaller so when you see the Cooper S one it actually comes up to behind these grills. That's not actually possible on the JCW and the reason why is there is an extra cooler actually behind this grill down here so that's an extra uh, water cooler for the coolant and the engine so to allow that to get a feed of water it's basically a pipe that comes out the front of the radiator it takes it down to a secondary radiator down behind this grill which that basically restricts the height of your aftermarket intercooler on a JCW the S doesn't have that extra cooler so you're able to get a taller intercooler on the Cooper S so for anyone wondering why JCW has a smaller intercooler that is why for the aftermarket ones. Okay, so the great thing with the F56 is you can get plenty of power out of them on the stock engine with a few sort of bolt-on performance mods. So we've already got the intercooler and the intake taking care of the, the cool air into the engine. We've also got a Scorpion decat downpipe so we can get those exhaust gases out as fast as possible and without the restriction of a cat. That then feeds a Remus Valtronic um, exhaust so in Valvetronic basically means you get a remote control that you can change the volume of the exhaust by opening and closing a flap within the back end of the exhaust and we've got carbon fiber tips on that so when we do it'll show you the back end of the car we'll show you those carbon fiber tips really smart again it's not one of the cheaper exhausts on the market but you pay for the quality of what you're getting with that exhaust and the functionality <laughs> means is you can get those hot gases out of the car as fast as possible to help with performance. Then to tie all those engine mods together we actually have a Peron uh, remap on the car so it hasn't gone a, a dyno yet so Nick from Peron actually came down and mapped the car for me um, but we'll, we'll get it on a dyno I'm expecting 300 brake horsepower plus with bucket load of torque and the car certainly feels a hell of a lot faster since I uh, had the remap done. So yeah, really excited about that. Okay, so moving on to the front end of the car now, we were talking about the Venturi intake on the inside of the uh, engine bay. The bonnet scoop is actually functional. So you can see here that there are holes that go through the bonnet and actually feed cool air, or feed the ambient air, into the, uh, the intake system. So that makes that a functional scoop from factory. That's actually fully sealed up and it's just there for looks. So I'm glad that we've got that functional scoop there. We've got the new grille surrounds, so we put black grille surrounds on the uh, front end of the car as well to get rid of that red lipstick look that was on it when the uh, previous owner painted the front end. The front bumper bar, so that's actually been smooth, so from factory they come with holes for the number plate. I've actually had that smoothed and painted black to freshen that up. I don't run a front number plate screwed into the bumper, I actually put it through a towing eye um, number plate holder. 
so that I can remove it um, for pictures and things like that. Okay, so behind the grill here, you may not be able to see, pick it up on the video, but I've also painted the support red in there, so it's like a bit of a strut brace slash radiator support in there. That's been painted red as well. Then the front end, we've colour coded the headlights. So again, with all my minis, remove the chrome off them and get those colour coded and painted by the body shop. Okay, and because the car came with the LED headlights, they've already got black innards, so I don't need to dechrome those. They're actually black innards from factory, so that's good, saves me Joe modding them. And then finally, one thing I did modify as well is I actually fitted the JCW Pro uh, front lips, just to add a bit of aggression to the front end. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the wheel and tyre combination as well as the brakes. So brakes behind here, the factory JCW ones, so they're 335mm discs with four pot calibers made by Brembo. They're a really good upgrade if you have a Cooper S. Luckily with mine it was a factory JCW so it came from those from factory. Okay so wheel wise we went for Oz Ultra Legeras in the bronze colour. So it's a, a satin bronze so it's not a, a glossy shiny version. So, and I think the, the bronze works really well with the white silver bodywork and something different to the usual black or grey that people go on these cars. So they're 18 by 8 ET45 with a 5mm space on the front to clear the suspension setup. So it actually has BC coilovers on all round with top mounts. And this car came from factory with dynamic suspension. Um, so the rear top mounts are slightly different on this set, made specifically for cars with that from factory. Tire wise we've gone for Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, um, 205, 40, 18 all round. So there's a tiny little bit of stretch, actually less than the factory setup, um, but that just allows clearance because the car's actually going to come a little lower so we need to adjust the suspension on this and obviously the coilovers are fully adjustable for height and rebound. So we're going to bring that down a little bit and just took that, that lip just slightly just to close that wheel gap off a bit more. I'm not quite happy with that yet so that's one future mod and also the Oz racing wheels come with the carbon fiber centers and also new bolts because they sit slightly different um, compared to the stock ones so the Oz wheels actually came supplied through orange with these new bolts okay so what have we done down the side of the car so we've obviously talked about the wheel and tire setup so you can see that the car sits nicely on the BC coilovers we've also color coded the door handle so again this is chrome on your standard Mini F56. I've actually took those off the car and there's a video on the channel on how to remove these door handles, paint them, and then refit them to the car. So take a look at that and I'll put the link below. Belt line, that's obviously taped up. So we've got rid of the chrome belt line by using the black tape that you can get on eBay. Many sellers sell it um, to get rid of that chrome strip. Not a big fan of that. You can see obviously we've got the red contrast roof to the white silver bodywork. Now I, a lot of people say to get rid of this, now I've gone for bronze wheels. For me, it ties in really nicely with the interior that's got plenty of red bits. We've got the red brakes from JCW anyway, and red JCW side markers. So I think the red ties in really well. Come to the back of the car, and you've got the petrol cap. So that's actually been color coded as well. So from factory, they come chrome. It's not an option to have these painted. So again, I've stripped that off the car, got it painted and refitted. So there's also a video on the YouTube channel on how to do that. And I think one of the biggest changes on the side profile of the car that you'll notice from a before and after photo, and I'll post up the before now, is actually the car was fully colour coded. Now I think that works really well on an R53, just because they have slightly wider arches that stick out from the car. With the F56, they're really flat and there's not a big difference in terms of profile so it looks a bit odd to me having colour coded arches so I actually refitted a brand new set of black trim and all along the side skirts etc all this black trim all around the car is actually brand new and fitted to the car after I purchased it and I think it looks a lot better than the colour coded look I think for me I just wasn't a fan of that when I purchased the car but I'd got such a bargain on the car I wasn't bothered the fact that it came with the colour coded arches it was an easy simple fix Okay, so coming to the back of the car, we've got a number of changes from stock. So first thing I did when I colour coded the front headlights and the door handles was colour coded this lights around here. So this again is chrome and the lights on the uh, F56 generation is that they're actually big and bulky lights. So what 
what you do is if you remove that chrome trim actually makes them look a little bit smaller and just a bit better balanced like the older versions of the car also you'll notice the big wing on the back so the car came from factory with a jcw wing what i decided to do was actually go for a dual lag style wing so it's genuine carbon fiber piece over the top as well as this red painted portion underneath now there's a vid video um, on how to fit this to your car on the channel it's not a simple bolt on you've got to get it painted there's a bit of sanding to do and work but i think it really complements the back end of the car and because it's a bit bigger and bulkier um, compared to previous generations i think a, a big wing really works well on this car okay so also on the back end of the car you can see the boot handle is actually smooth now on your car potentially it's got a mini badge pressed onto the back of this not a big fan of the size of that badge so i decided to have it smoothed over by the body shop and painted to match the color of the car so i think again i like the idea of color coding a lot of parts on the car you can see again we've got the belt line um, is black and that's all the way around the car to get rid of any of that chrome now one of the future plans for me is removing this rear wiper for a future video coming to the channel we already have it on the shelf just waiting for a chance to fit it to the car's rear wiper delete as well get rid of that wiper and clean up that back end a little bit more one of the things i also fitted on this car was the uh, jcw pro diffuser so i think it really smartens up the back end of the car now i don't like the idea of calling it diffuser it's not functional purely fitted for the looks of the back end um, and it was something i wanted to do uh, when i brought the car because it just adds that a bit of aggression to the back end and also these lips here on the corners they are also part of that jcw pro set um, and add a bit of more of an aggressive shape which is what we did on the front end as well just to add a bit of something interesting going on at the back down here we've got those carbon fiber remus tips we were talking about so i'll show you a picture of those now a bit of a close-up in terms of those went for those over not a big fan of the podish tips really i like the idea of the uh, the carbon fiber tips that the remus come with really work well and and work with the carbon fibre we've got on the wing and the carbon fibre down the front as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the interior now. So we'll start with the door cards. So we've got piano black trim all the way round. Really smart and comes on the JCW. You can see we've got the red highlights in terms of the door handles and also across the dash. That was an option that I really wanted. I was lucky enough that this JCW came with it. Audio wise, it's got the full uh, Harman Kardon audio in there so no need to touch the stereo on on this car um, it's really good from factory i was really impressed with it compared to some of the previous generations so that's not going to get touched we've got jcw kick plates on there so that's nice and again just remind you the fact that you get into a jcw so you step into the car and one of the first bits you'll notice is the steering wheel so that's actually a custom steering wheel from Griggle so I'll put a link uh, down below to where you can get this done so I had that custom trimmed in leather with Alcantara with the red center line and red stitching all the way around and they also made a flat bottom so all I did with this is actually send them a stock Cooper S steering wheel that I had on the shelf from a previous car and they actually redid all this so I've still got my JCW steering wheel in the garage so if I ever decide to get rid of the car, I can refit that and sell this one on. Okay, as it's a JCW, you can see we've got darker dials um, with the red sporty JCW trim. You can just about see it there popping up out the dash is actually a, a heads up display. So that displays your rev counter, your speed, um, sat nav instructions, etc. That's a really one, handy one to have. You've got central console with the multimedia, so it's got the wider screen on it and it comes with all the extra sort of vehicle information so you can get all information on your car. It's got all control for your iPhone, um, so you can play your music through it, DAB, radio, all that, so that's really handy. Interior-wise, there's not really much that I want to change. Um, I think the JCW F56 interior is one of the best on the minis. One thing I did do, was up here we start put the ignition on so you can see there we've actually got a p3 
gauge so it's mounted into the vent and it will read out a number of uh, stats on the car whether it's oil pressure uh, oil temps coolant temps intake temps etc so you can keep an eye on all that sort of important information but i like the flat fact it doesn't stand out it's not a gauge stuck onto the top of your dash or anything it blends in with that that air grill so you can see the difference all you do is you remove these two top slats and fit that in so that's a really good nice little mod also in terms of the gaiters so you get leather with red stitching at some point i want to upgrade the gear knob because this is a jcw one so i want something maybe a carbon fiber one from a previous generation and because these are slightly taller than previous generations i'd just need a new gator made so i'd probably go for some alcantara ones like i've got in the r53 you got a central armrest as well again that's factory option from mini and I think they're one of the biggest and my favourite parts of the interior on this car are the JCW seats. So they come with cloth on the edges, so where this red part is. You've got an Alcantara centres and then you've got some leather work on the bolsters as well. So they last really well um, and, and hug you. For a standard seat, they hug you pretty well and hold you in place. Obviously not as good as fixed buckets, etc. But for me, this car's just as much about comfort um, as well as performance. So having these seats, they're heated as well, um, is a great option to have. And in the back, you actually get matching seats. So with the same Alcantara leather and red setup. Hopefully you found this video entertaining today. So we're gonna do lots more vlog type videos as well. Okay, so if you could do me a massive favor and hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you get future notifications, just hit that bell icon and you'll get alerts every time we upload new content. So thanks again for watching, stay safe and we'll see you in the next video. Bit, and there's actually little holes on the bottom.